The art of debating. Should you attack the person? Hello. Have you ever been in a heated argument where attacking the other person seemed the only option? In this video, we will discuss whether using personal attacks in arguments is acceptable. We will also explore the advantages and disadvantages of attacking the person and how it can effectively win arguments. Join me as we delve into the world of debating, persuasive communication and the age-old question of how to win arguments. Have you heard of the term ad hominem? It is a Latin phrase that means to the person. It refers to attacking an opponent's character instead of their argument. When you criticize someone's character, circumstances or credentials, you are engaging in an ad hominem attack. This type of argument focuses on the opponent's motives, background or personal qualities instead of their statement. You might have encountered ad hominem in your life at some stage. Imagine this scenario. You are watching a soccer game and the opposing team is doing everything possible to stop the star player. Although the phrase, play the ball, not the man, is commonly used in sports, it's not always true in every soccer game. The same goes for debating. To win, opponents often resort to personal attacks to discredit each other. Ad hominem arguments which attack an opponent's credibility and character can be compelling. Therefore, you must recognize this aspect of debating. In debating and persuasive communication, the famous philosopher Aristotle introduced the concept of logos, ethos and pathos. I have a video on this topic and I'll link it in the description. In ancient Rome, a renowned orator named Marcus Cicero was known for his invective speeches and character assassination techniques. The current debates that I watch on TV, nothing is off limits. Personal attacks are regularly employed to discredit the opponent. Criticizing an opponent's credibility can be a powerful tactic as it can change the audience perspective. Picture yourself in a situation where you take a moral stance and avoid attacking someone personally. Meanwhile, your opponent is working tirelessly to persuade the audience that they are trustworthy and you are not. You give them the upper hand by not responding with a counter attack on their character. To even the playing field and emerge victorious, it may be necessary to use ad hominem arguments strategically during the course of the debate. But how do you use ad hominem without it backfiring? By understanding the three basic types of ad hominem, abusive, circumstantial and hypocrisy. Each has its own place in a debater's arsenal but must be applied appropriately. Abusive, in other words, name calling. The first type of ad hominem is known as abusive. This attack involves verbal abuse and name calling, focusing on character flaws. The abusive ad hominem tactic damages the opponent's reputation and credibility. If the opponent has a history of dishonesty, it can influence how the audience perceives their current argument. Example, if I recommend intermittent fasting to others, someone might question my authority. They might ask how long I have been practicing intermittent fasting and how I concluded it is beneficial. Since you have trouble controlling your own appetite, how can you recommend intermittent fasting to others? I hope you get the point. All these attacks are personal and challenge my character. The second type, circumstantial, also known as uh, conflict of interest. The second type of ad hominem is circumstantial, focusing on opponent's vested interest or potential conflict of interest. The aim of this argument is not to disapprove their argument's validity, but to subject the person making the argument to additional scrutiny. By pointing out a conflict of interest, one can effectively undermine the credibility of their claim. Examples. 
Given your involvement in the construction industry, it seems you have a vested interest in advocating for affordable housing. Or you suggest that children opt for digital books, which aligns with your profession as a digital illustrator. Now we come to the third type, hypocrisy, also known as accusation. There is a third type of ad hominem known as hypocrisy or you also with a tone of accusation. It is called an ad hominem attack when someone argues against another person's advice or belief by pointing out their hypocritical behavior. It attacks the opponent's past action that contradicts their current statements and questions how they can hold a specific view or stance they don't follow. Is it unfair to question why someone's behavior doesn't align with their words? Is it inappropriate to point out inconsistencies? This type of ad hominem challenges the opponent's ability to practice what they preach. Examples If a parent tells their child to read instead of playing video games, the child might argue that the parent is always on their phone. If someone advocates for saving the planet and protecting the environment but owns multiple gas guzzling SUVs, it's hard to reconcile their words with their actions. Or it's also hypocritical of someone to advocate for electric cars while driving a gas powered SUV. Similarly, if someone suggests reading 52 books in a year but has yet to read many themselves, it is hard to trust and is subject to ad hominem attack. It's essential to recognize that questioning an opponent's credibility can take different forms including abusive, circumstantial and hypocritical ad hominem attacks all rolled into one. Credibility and character are crucial in any argument and should not go unchallenged. In this video, we have discussed the pros and cons of using ad hominem and when appropriate. How can you effectively use this technique during a live debate? It's essential to conduct thorough research on your opponent's history and experience beforehand. I cannot stress enough the importance of doing your homework. It's best not to initiate ad hominem attack during a debate, but if your opponent does, you need to be prepared. How can you carry out the attack? How can you launch it effectively? Here are some guidelines. When someone claims to be a doctor, lawyer, author, leader, company president or head of a department for a certain number of years and says, trust me, they are attempting to prove their expertise. This is an opportunity for an ad hominem attack, assuming you have done your research, you have some ammunition for the personal attack. Keep in mind that character and credibility are closely linked. If you challenge their character, you may also be able to undermine their credibility. Here are some examples of challenging authority. What is your knowledge about this issue? When did you become an expert on this topic? What qualification do you have to make a judgment? If they can't answer, the audience may start to doubt the validity of their arguments. Another method is to use their past claims against them. If they have a history of failure or misjudgment, call them out on that. It's essential to remember that when you attack someone's character, you are taking a significant risk with potentially high rewards. However, be prepared to face counterattacks and criticism. If you execute poorly, it could weaken your overall argument and even backfire. Before using ad hominem, take time to research your opponent's background and experience thoroughly. I prefer to avoid personal attacks unless my opponent initiates them. Should they occur, I am ready to challenge their character question their qualifications or bring up past statements they have made. In conclusion, debating isn't just about playing the ball, it is also about playing the man. While attacking the person in an argument may seem morally questionable, it can be an effective strategy when used strategically. The key is to strike a balance between attacking the person and attacking the merits of the argument. Remember. Ad hominem should supplement your debate, not replace your core arguments. So next time you find yourself in a discussion, consider whether it's crucial to challenge your opponent's credibility.
I hope you would be able to apply some of the techniques shared in this video. Before you go, please subscribe to my channel and also check out the related content on the screen. See you next time. Bye for now.